All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome again to this webinar on virtual pump design through simulation. Today we'll be going through industry trends, providing examples on specifically system simulation and 3D simulation and how they can aid with pump engineering. And we're very excited to be going through that with you. Please note that this will be an interactive webinar where we will have short poll polling questions throughout. So we look forward to your input and your interactions. If you have questions as we're going through the presentation, please go ahead and ask them in the question feature, and we will aim to address them towards the end of the webinar or by email if we run out of time. should also note that the presentation material will be shared by email as well. In terms of who you're talking to today or, or who's going to be sharing um, insights with you, so today there's uh, three of us that will be sharing and talking. First and foremost, my name is Daniel Mazar. I will be your host for this webinar. And I, I look forward to fielding your questions and, and giving you some insights as we bring you through this uh, webinar. Joining me are two of my colleagues, Hassan Jabri and Yafa Siddiqui. The three of us work at, at Maya HTT, an engineering firm that I'll be introducing in just a little bit. However, uh, we're, we're quite excited to bring our expertise where we leverage our engineering background that the three of us have uh, towards solving complex business and, and, and technical challenges that we see coming up. So we're looking forward to interacting, talking with you. I'll start off by, by just giving a little bit of insight into the webinar in the series and then passing it over to them. So today's webinar is as part of our engineering innovation series that we have ongoing. We, we had a first overview and, and, and design focused webinar on rotating machinery. And that was quite well attended. We had some great interactions um, with, I think some of you may have joined that one as well. Uh, that's available on demand, and we can also send it over by, by email if required. Just send us a note. Today, as mentioned, we, we talk a little bit more about systems and CAE simulation. Um, and finally, we're going to have a third one as part of the series on, on manufacturing, specifically digital manufacturing that's going to be in about a month's time. So if you're interested in that one, again, give us a shout, and we'll share a little bit more information um, on that webinar. So that's uh, just a quick update on that webinar series for you. As I mentioned, uh, the three of us work at Maya HTT, and, and Maya is, is proud and excited to be hosting this webinar series. So we're a leading provider of digital engineering solutions and, and partner and work quite strongly uh, with, with Siemens digital industry software. Um, we're actually the number one global partner for Siemens. While our, our history started off more so in aerospace, uh, we've actually been working with rotating machines and pumps for over 30 years in multiple different applications and industries. This includes, again, a huge variety of, of different pumps that, that may be related to work that you're doing right now. We could be looking at applications related to displacement, uh, centrifugal forces, rotary gear pumps, anything in that area or even beyond. Um, these are things that we have interest in. Simulation really is, is our, our strong suit, but, and, and really it's, it's, it's something that that we, we do quite well, but it, it's a small subset of our, our expertise and, and it actually ranges quite a bit beyond simulation. Uh, for example, especially in this day and age, we're seeing a, a tremendous interest in AI applications um, and industrial IoT as, as things are being moved to being more remote. Um, and, and so those are conversations we see going, going around. You know, in, in relation to pumps, that gets into being able to capture data related to a pump in the field or in part of the, the R&D or innovation process and then capturing it, turning it into information either through um, some form of recursive algorithms or, or data application and sciences. This could also include uh, some quality control measures. So that's just a little snippet of something we do. Again, we'll talk more about manufacturing in our next webinar, but th there's a lot more than what you're seeing here today. Today, we really just wanted to keep it focused on simulation for pumps. <clears throat> So just getting getting into the presentation itself, uh, we want to start off by just sharing some of the trends that we've been seeing and working with customers and, and, and data that we're capturing in relation to the pumps and, and, and hydro turbine market. So really, when it comes to key factors of, of making sure that products, product innovation is critical and, and companies remain competitive, you know, there, there's a couple that we wanted to get into. First and foremost is around efficiency. So naturally, pump companies have always strived to, to develop pumps that have higher efficiency as a way of putting themselves above and, and beyond their competitors. Um, however, as you could see in this quote, 
you know, many, many, as much as 20% of pumps on the market today are just not efficient enough. And as competition increases and there's stricter government requirements, this is going to force older, less efficient pumps out of the market. So something needs to be done there. Another big focus is just around being faster time to market. You know, many customers are expecting, in some cases, demanding that the pump providers provide better performing pumps faster um, and right the first time. So we recognize that, and and also you know it's, we see it in our discussions at executive levels that there's pressures being put to shrink product development times, and while that's there's pressure on reducing the product development uh, cycle. Of course, that results in an increase in profitability. So, as that cost gets lowered, you know, companies are 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 looking for ways to ensure that the the, the top line as well is increasing. Again, one of the ones we we hear about quite a bit is just around risk mitigation and management. So, you know, we we appreciate and understand the need to to manage that risk, um, and and you can't really, you know, while you're trying to be time to market, you need to ensure that. Risk is, is something that you're keeping in mind because if we're looking at product recalls or issues out in the field, um, that can result in potential large losses in terms of market share. So, you know, there are a couple of competing objectives of work here. There may be some trade off decisions, and that's something I, I think that, you know, we, we see quite a bit and, and help our customers work through. Adding to that, you know, customization, tailoring is, is a big part of ensuring that requirements are being met for customers because you know people want things related more so to their specific processes and and uh, business needs so this idea of of not only having things that are let's say off the shelf but that are customized or, or quickly customized uh, that's that's something that we're seeing as well where you know we're with with the with the advent of, of new technologies companies and customers are looking to develop new non-standard pumps um, which is going to require rapid Development times as well as rigorous testing to ensure those designs perform according to those new specifications. And again, putting all of this together, really, that results in this requirement to do quite a bit more testing. So as you're looking to deal with harsher operating conditions, um, looking at all of these innovative designs, these are things I need to do in, in, in a much quicker time than before. So really, we're seeing quite a few different things impacting the market right now. Um, in these challenges. So as we're moving on, um, on our end, to just walk you through a little bit of these trends and what they could look like, really we're, we're, we see a lot of advent of innovation being driven through this idea of simulation um, and, and virtual prototyping. So, you know, as a result of those trends that we just discussed, it becomes extremely important to maximize the efficiency of pumps, you know, ensuring that you can meet ever tighter government requirements and industry standards, such as NC, API, ISO, you know, also ensuring that your pumps are reliable, that they are able to perform as expected over time. You also need to ensure as you're driving that innovation that you're able to predict how well the pumps will perform across a wide range of operating conditions rather than just, just at the best efficiency point or the BEP to minimize the risk and ensure that pumps perform as expected um, every time when it comes to your customers. So as we see all these different things, the key really is being able to discover better designs faster and that there's no surprises um, for your end customer as they get their delivered products. Now, one of the things we hear, because there's quite a few uh, customers that are out there that are familiar when it comes to simulation, but really we're, we're seeing that a simulation strategy, especially around this idea of innovation, is, is something that's expanded quite a bit over time. So when we look at design exploration, you know, previously companies were more so focused on, on just validating and troubleshooting their designs through simulation. And, and that's something that we'd say is, is a little bit more reactive, it's a little bit slower. Um, and, and you know, sort of where where the initial value of simulation had come in. You know, and that's that's where a majority of companies operate. We saw that jump a couple of years back where you know we started looking at things that are more related to predictive. Um, and you know, again, that's a little bit more proactive, and that gets us to to places where we where we can see a bit more value driven. But really, where we want to get to is this idea of of design space exploration, where you're able to automate and explore, so that you can look at various different phenomena 
and, and different inputs and, and how they interact and operate when it comes to your design conditions. Um, that's where we see innovative companies are working in terms of ensuring that they're able to explore digitally and then confirm physically. So, you know, if you started and you have a simulation strategy that's a little bit more on the reactive side, or you're looking to say, okay, how can I go ahead and start moving towards automating and really doing some design space exploration? You know, those are areas that, that I think we're excited to help with. And we'll talk a little bit more about that today as we get through some of our examples. So with that, again, it's just to present you with, with a little bit of an overview as to why we're here today, what are the trends we're seeing, and where we see the simulation space going. I'm now gonna pass it over to my colleague, Hassan Jabri, and Hassan's gonna bring us through on the first technical section, which is more on, on system simulation. So Hassan, please uh, please take us away. Thanks, Dan. Hi, uh, so my name is Hassan. Um, at this point, let's take a closer look at our system simulation. While typical CA solutions are heavily dependent on available geometries, our system simulation software, uh, SimCenter Ampson, does systems modeling in a different way. The approach is in theory quite simple. Um, by creating 1D models uh, based on predefined ready to use libraries in Ampson, one can create a multi-physics model rapidly. Uh, these models can be easily clicked together into a complete systems model. The physics embedded in the components can be used to calculate how the energy is gonna flow from one component to another and how eventually this energy is going to be converted into heat, motion, or even a chemical reaction. These, these um, uh, 1D models that are actually created in Ampson can also be used for a 3D cost simulation and control strategy validation. Let's take a closer look at the overall portfolio of SimCenter, um, where Ampson lies. So in the SimCenter portfolio, um, we have a huge variety of simulation softwares, varying from, from 3D simulations like CFD into a 1D simulations like AIMSIM, in addition to virtually testing softwares that enable us to virtually test our software, our, our system in real life. SimCenter is not limited to that. It also extends to having a PLM software. Given SimCenter, a PLM software, firms can now add an excellent PLM PDM aspect to their organizations in order to maximize efficiency and facilitate data management. Also, collaboration between SimCenter software is a great feature. It enables us, um, the users, to interface different softwares together in order to meet their challenging requirements. Focusing more on the 1D system simulation side, so SimCenter Ampson uh, is a multi-physics simulation software. It uses a variety of physics-based libraries in order to create a model. So the examples we see here, which are fluids, mechanics, electrical, thermodynamics, engine and control, are a few of the plenty different libraries that Ampson actually has. These libraries are ready to use multi-physics libraries with more than 6,000 components that have been developed and validated in cooperation with our industrial partners. Um, and another outstanding feature of Ampson is that it also has extensive industry-based libraries. So having components that represent a variety of industries in, in terms of applications. So these libraries are tailored to support automotive, aerospace, industrial machinery, even marine applications. Perfect. So as I mentioned, it's going to be an interactive webinar. So we're ready to get started with our first poll. Um, what we want to do is we want to try to understand a little bit more about a little bit more about how you're doing early stage controls validation. So I'm going to go ahead and share that poll now. So again, just go, go ahead and select it. Again, no wrong answers. We're just trying to learn a little bit more about the audience here today. So do you do any early stage control validation? Yes, including connection to PLC for automation. Yes, up to FIL or software in the loop. No, we only validate physical commissioning uh, in the physical commissioning phase. Or no, we do not validate controls for our equipment. So why don't you take uh, another 30 seconds or so and just go ahead and, and include your answers there and then we'll move forward.
Perfect. We'll give it another 10 seconds. All right. Thank you. So just to quickly share, again, it, it's, it's good to know we have an audience that, that spreads across um, a few different areas. And in terms of seeing the majority of people only validating in the physical commissioning phase, uh, I'd say that, that's typical to, to some of the customers that we're talking to, um, which again are looking to more so work on some, some early stage type validation. So it, it's good to see that there's a few of those different um, representations in place. Um, in case we're we're looking to get up to you know connecting to the PLC level or, or the SIL level, you know that may be something to to discuss in a future date. But again, we we just wanted to to get an idea of where the audience was. Thank you. With that, I'm going to pass it back to you, Hassan, um, to continue the presentation. Perfect. Thanks, Daniel. So. Um... Generally speaking, AIMSIM allow, AIM allows for the uh, simulation of multiple domains of physics together put in as a system. So as we can see here, we have a perfect example of a multi-physics system. This is modeled in AIMSIM. This model actually covers a variety of physics-based components, starting on the left-hand side where we see an electrical um, synchronous motor with all of its different subsystems. On the right-hand side, we see a combination of thermal, mechanical, hydraulics, pneumatic components all put together in order to complete a system. Notice that um, we see different colors in our model. That is because in AIMSIM, libraries are color-coded, meaning that every library has a unique color, which makes the user's life way easier when trying to locate components from a model. So um, following up the control topic, so one of the main features of AIMSIM is its controls library. This controls library allows you to create your own controls over the model, or you can even import controls into AIMSIM from an external source, SIL. Um, this is a very crucial point because it helps with validating your system controls early at the design stage. So AIMSIM supports the modeling of various types of pumps, from lubrication associated pumps like vein pumps or gear rotor pumps, into a more fluid power associated pumps like the swash plate. So not only that, but AIMSIM also supports sub-options for these pumps. For instance, adding a variable displacement function or a friction and leakage system to a vein pump, or even creating a double compression vein pump. We can do many more application-oriented options that we're going to be viewing in the upcoming slides. So the various pumps modeled in AIMSIM um, can be integrated to systems that represent an industry application. So the three application uh, examples that we see here are a few out of the many different applications that um, are supported within the scope of AIMSIM. So starting off with the automotive industry where lubrication and fuel injection pumps are immensely used. Um, moving to the aerospace and defense industry where landing gear and fuel injection pumps are very significant given the restrictions for tolerances and safety factors within the industry itself. Last but not least, um, the oil and gas circuit pumps, which makes a great role in the heavy machinery industry given the frequent users of these pumps in such a growing industry. Uh, in the upcoming slides, we're going to be seeing some of the capabilities of our software in overcoming these industry challenges. So here we're going to be looking into some of the challenges that can be tackled um, in AIMSIM when it comes to pumps applications. So first of all, understanding the flow and characteristics, char uh, pressure characteristics for selecting a pump is very crucial. So AIMSIM actually has the capabilities of plotting such graphs for a modeled pump. Also, mechanical and volumetric efficiencies of the pumps are some of the results that can be outputted when we run a simulation in AIMSIM. In addition, uh, parameters like the performance and stability regulations of your pump is actually uh, very important to get at a very early stage and design process, which is one of the main features in AIMSIM. So it's actually AIMSIM allows you to examine your pump in an overall system early in the design process. Also, predicting cavitation and aeration is supported in AIMSIM. A lot of the application examples we're going to be seeing shortly will highlight this feature. So in this first example, um, we see a previously designed um, sliding vein pump that is being modeled in AIMSIM. What's actually being done here is that there's a CAD model of this pump is actually being imported into AIMSIM. This is one of the newest advanced capabilities of the software, where you can define a pump model in AIMSIM using a CAD model. So when a CAD model gets imported into AIMSIM, 
IMSIM will identify the geometry of the imported CAD model and assign it to the model in IMSIM. After doing that, a designer now has the ability to assess the performance of his pump in an overall system, um, taking into consideration all the actual connections and the integrations of his pump in real life applications. So as we can see here, the pump is linked to an actuator and is linked to an input rotor speed. So creating this model, it allowed the user to get critical um, outputs like the graph we see here, where a comparison of the suction and delivery flow areas were plotted um, against the uh, volume of the hydraulic chamber. Here we see a more detailed pump model. This model is for an external gear pump where it was initially modeled in a CAD software and then it was remodeled in AIMSIM. So by using some of the inputs from the CAD model, like the geometry, for instance, we created this model, uh, which is a more detailed model. It is generally a give and take scenario. So you design a, a more detailed model, you get more information out of it, just like this example here. So upon creating this model, it enables the user um, to get results that in return, it helped him or her um, analyze the teeth cavity pressures, for instance, for every cavity in the gear tooth, which was critical at the design stage. Moving forward, sorry, it's lagging. Uh, um, here we see a swash plate pump modeled in a CAD environment, uh, and then it's again remodeled in AIMSIM. So the goal here is to show that AIMSIM covers different interests based on the type of model that one is trying to, to model. So modeling this pump in AIMSIM with all of its components, it allowed the user actually to test various scenarios of their pump early in the design process. So what that, uh, we see multiple different components being modeled here. We see pistons, swash plates, and many more. So the goal of this detailed design is to actually get a specific analysis for various components. So for example, we were able to extract um, each pressure from every piston in order to have a look at the peak pressures in the pump. So in conclusion, virtually testing uh, various scenarios of your pump during the design process actually saves a lot of money and time trying to physically test these scenarios. So this slide actually highlights the uh, simulation time of AIMSIM. Basically, we can create a significantly big pump model and get good accurate results in no time. So um, here we have a high pressure pump. We can also look at um, assessing different criteria for operating it. Um, we can track it in a very quick simulation to know, for instance, if there's gonna be cavitations or not. So the assessment is generally really quick. Once the model is created, it becomes a very good test bench in order to assess different scenarios that the user wishes to test, given that actually it, is, it does not take long to run the simulation and get results. So this is an application of a gear rotor pump. Um, it's used by SCA. So when we create a model in AIMSIM, the great benefit is that there are actually a number of things we are able to accomplish with creating such a model. So for instance, um, the variation of the flow areas for both the suction and delivery were obtained and plotted during the operation of this pump. In addition, the cavity pressure analysis was also done. But the interest, interesting part here is, even as spectral analysis was performed, it enabled the users to actually look at the vibrational response and the analysis of the pump at different given speeds. So um, this analysis actually helped the SDA engineers move forward in their design, given that they now have a good basis to rely on. So this application shows another um, gear rotor pump uh, modeled by the University of Polytechnic in Turin. So this model was incorporated into a larger system where we can show that the pump is operating in its real environment. Um, due to the quick simulation times of such models, this model was actually used to compare to the experimental rig shown on the top right corner of the slide. So after we ran the simulation, we see that there's actually a good agreement between the simulation results that we got from Ansys and the experimental results. Both results graphs show how the experimental and simulation data share the same values throughout the simulation runtime. So hence, um, this shows the accuracy of AIMSIM and the reliability to actually mock a real life application. So moving forward to another application from the same university. Four years after the first application, um, University of Polytechnic created another model, for, but this time for a sliding uh, variable vein pump. 
the process is similar to what we pre what was previously done. Um, the experimental data here was compared to the simulation data of the AMSA model, but this time for a different pump. So the flow rate pressure uh, and the pressure were actually addressed to give the engineers an idea of how their pump is reacting at different pressures. After doing that, the pump and the uh, the, the pump's pressure and angular position were uh, were plotted in a graph to compare the experimental and the simulation data. And again, the conclusion was that the simulation results were accurate and they were in line with the experimental results. So here we see a swash plate pump that is being modeled for Liebherr. Um, so as we move forward in time, new capabilities are actually added to the software. For instance, design studies. So in design studies, um, optimization or batch analysis can actually be performed. So here, um, Liebherr did an optimization study of the valve plate for an axial piston pump. The study aimed to analyze the port shapes on the swash plate. So the goal was here to minimize the flow fluid and the uh, structure-based noise. Not only that, but also to prevent cavitations. All these needs were to be achieved while also keeping the torque under control. So in conclusion, the results actually helped Liebherr greatly um, when they're trying to optimize their pump in order to know what exactly the best port shape is to be used in their current design and their upcoming design. A more modern application would be when um, Purdue University actually used AIMSIM to model an external gear pump. So here we had a couple analysis between system simulation and the CFD simulation. The information was shared between these two different analyses in order to, uh, to achieve the design requirements. So we were able to communicate information back and forth between the two simulation softwares in order to allow the detailed fluid, uh, fluid simulation CFD while considering also the rest of the system in AIMSIM. Why is this actually very important? Is because it is critical to isolate two different simulations for each to run on their own analysis and then combine them both together in order to get a complete analysis of your component. So in this application, um, Purdue University in collaboration with Magna, uh, Magna uh, Powertrain, they utilize AIMSIM in order to, um, to model a gyrotor pump. So as I previously mentioned, with the advancements we see in pumps throughout the years, on the other hand, AIMSIM is also advancing. We created a custom, face, custom interface for, uh, for pump designers in AIMSIM. So what that means is it helps a lot, it helps the, uh, the pump designers a lot. Building up on everything we discussed so far, this tool that is embedded in AIMSIM, in one menu, we can set all the parameters of the pump, the parameters like the geometry and the simulation parameters, we can also choose the um, necessary files and fix the operation other settings, for instance. In addition, we can um, create FEM or CAD connections to this tool. After doing all that, everything is combined into this embedded user interface tool. And then with a the push of a button, simulation runs with all of these inputs. So the benefit here is to really show how open AIMSIM is. We can build a custom UI where an analyst can use that very easily and very efficiently. And this way, a lot of tasks could actually be automated. This is an example of uh, how the multi-domain system simulation approach that is supported by AMSIM actually helps Liebherr, who is extensively using this solution in order to enhance their um, design process efficiency. It has been widely adopted uh, by Liebherr to be used for different types of systems, all various types of pumps, motors, etc. cetera. Um, this is a nice quote that we got from one of their respected engineers saying that SimCenter AMSIM is a well integrated and uh, in the development process and is actively employed to address two critical issues when designing axial piston pumps. First was the optimization of the swash plate dynamic behavior, and second was the noise reduction. So on top of actually being a widely open and a very efficient tool, SimCenter MSIM has also a lot of capabilities that save an engineer a lot of time creating a model. So one of these capabilities is that there's a lot of documentations and templates in MSIM that cover a huge variety of real life applications. So what I mean by that is that you are actually never starting from scratch when you're designing a pump, for instance. You can always open the documentation, search for the specific component that you're trying to model, and then start from there. A good example is shown here. When we first um, go to the help document, which is shown on the left-hand side of the, of the slide, we search for pumps, and then we go to the uh, get results that we see on the right-hand side. It shows us different ready-to-use models of pumps. Um, 
it, th these pro these models can be accessed by an by a user. So if one is trying to design a swashplate pump, for instance, you open the swashplate demo um, and then modify it to meet your requirements. Documentation are not also limited to specific solutions like pumps, motors. It is also extended to um, to industry applications where you can search for models under different industries, for instance. Uh, automotive, aerospace, even industrial machinery applications, marine, etc. And now Great. we have another poll. Yes, thank you, Saad, for those multiple examples. Uh, I think it showed just the, the breadth and depth of of what we're able to do with system simulation. So. Just to sort of wrap up this, this segment, um, we just wanted to have one more poll to, to better understand now that you've, you've seen some of those examples. So um, in terms of your current engineering processes, you know, do you run cross-domain or, or co-simulation analysis? Four options right there. Yes, our solutions are strongly coupled. Yes, however, our solutions are weakly coupled. No, we do not have any coupling between our simulation tools. No, we do not use simulation tools. So. If you could just take another 30 seconds and give us your insight there, um, that will just help us understand again where you are in relation to these tools and, and we'll continue on with the webinar. So again, if you could just quickly give your input there. Thank you. Great, we'll give it another 10 seconds. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and close the poll. Let's see how we did there. So, okay, pretty much even split in terms of um, the options other than the, the largest one, which is that there's no coupling between simulation tools. So again, as we're seeing integrations become more important um, to engineering processes, that's an area where we, we know we've had a lot of exploration and discussion um, with different clients. So, so if that's an area you want to explore a little more, so um, we, we'd be happy to, to take a look at that. Other than that, it's, it's good to understand a little bit more as to where your engineering processes are. So thank you for taking the time to, to help fill that out. Great, I think we're ready to move forward, Hassan. Perfect. So, um, thanks, Daniel. So, the nice thing about um, AIMSIM is that it actually has hooks to other analysis tools. So, tools like 3D Composition of Fluid Dynamics, CFD for fluid, um, detailed fluid modeling, or the FEA analysis for structural analysis. But the most important part here is the, for instance, for the controls engineer, the REST connection that we see. So you can build uh, some basic controlled algorithms in AMSIM. There's also a path for connection to control algorithms developed in other tools as well. We have traditionally done this with the uh, embedded controllers, but we're now moving to uh, connect to industrial controls as well. So that is it for the system side. I'm gonna be passing the mic on to my colleague Yafis to talk more about the CAE simulation. Thank you, Hassan. So what we just saw was that with system simulation, we get fast results. But this comes at the cost of some simplifying assumptions and approximations. We can't tell how complete as will pump will truly operate, particularly when managing complex unsteady flow phenomena such as turbulence, recirculation, cavitation, and vibration. So these can be understood by simulating the full fidelity 3D CAD geometry. Within the Sim Center portfolio, we have multiple solutions to resolve such 3D physics. These solutions differentiate based on the type of physics being resolved and the user simulation experience level. Today's presentation, we will focus on one of the solutions that is Sim Center Star CTM Plus. Before I begin, let me give you an elevator pitch to what Sim Center Star CTM Plus is. Sim Center Star CTM Plus is the CFD focused multi-physics engineering solution 
that uniquely integrate comprehensive physics with digital with intelligent design exploration in a single CAD to solution environment. It's built for the most simple to the most advanced CFD simulation needs. As we go through the presentation, you will see how this elevator pitch and the different components of the elevator pitch unfold. So let's start with an actual industrial problem. Let's take an industrial centrifugal pump, for example. We would like to reduce its operational cost by decreasing the electricity consumption. The objective would be to minimize the power required while maintaining the flow rate and pressure head. The design parameters we are given to adjust are the blade shape and the number of blades. Before we move ahead in finding the most optimum solution, let's run a poll. Great, thanks, Yafis. Again, this is our, our third poll. It relates back to what we had shown a little bit earlier on just optimization studies and, and, and moving sort of towards the, the right side of that graph um, in terms of how you're, you're looking at innovation and optimization studies. So currently, do you run optimization studies to determine the best possible design? We have four options again. Yes, we have a streamlined workflow. Second, yes, but the workflow is cumbersome. Third, no, we do not have the resources slash tools. And fourth, no, we have not attempted any optimization studies. So again, we'll give we'll give a little bit of time for, for everyone to go ahead and fill this out. Great, we'll give it just another 10 seconds. If anyone wants to go ahead and, and give their insight into the poll. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and, and close it. So let's see. <laughs> Interestingly enough, you know, no one is uh, fully satisfied with the workflow. <laughs> Um, and determines that, that a streamline. It, it's good to note that the, there is a couple of you attending that believe that you, you have something in place, however it's cumbersome, so that may be an area to, to try to explore and see, okay, how, how can we, we streamline that and support that a little better. Um, for those that, that you know don't have the resources or tools, again, we, we're looking at ways in, in terms of uh, trying to make it a little more, a uh, little less or resource in, intensive. So that may be something to explore. Um, and those that haven't looked at optimization, so again, it may not be part of your workflow right now, but as we mentioned, industry shifting towards that direction, it may be something to consider in the future. So it's, uh, we appreciate everyone sharing their insight. I think uh, either way, it's good for us to note. With that, Yafas, back to you. Thank you very much, Dan. So I guess by the end of this presentation, we're gonna change everyone's mind by introducing STAR, which provides the streamlined approach to optimization. So in this example, automated design exploration was used to discover the most optimum design. This design required significantly less power. That's a 6% pump efficiency improvement. And this improvement was obtained after the customer had already attempted to manually optimize the original design and felt that they had done a good enough job. This optimizer ran through 300 simulations comprising of around a few days on a 32 core cluster. Uh, 32 core cluster. A key I would like to iterate, a key point I would like to iterate here is that this design exploration was 100% automated. In today's presentation, we will focus on how this process is possible in Star CCM Plus. So, first I'll begin with the traditional approach. Once the simulation is solved and analyzed, to run a new design variant, we would have to manually redo the simulation process, recreate the geometry, create a new mesh, and then post process and analyze the data. The problem of the manual approach is that, first, it's time consuming. Second, you can run limited design variants. Finally, you might get a good enough solution with the most optimum solution. 
With the new approach, the process of changing the geometry, meshing, solving, and post-processing is automated. This would enable you to increase the number of designs you test, reduce the amount of time to market, and by integrating it with an inbuilt optimizer, get the best design possible. The end goal would be enable you to accelerate innovation and give you that competitive edge. The required steps to this approach is building a parametric model, testing the variance automatically, assessing each design, and finally exploring the design space to find the most optimum solution. To accomplish design exploration in a streamlined method, you need to find the right tools and processes. However, all of this can be done through a single tool that is SimCenter Star. Star CCM at its core is centered on this concept, discovering better design faster. First, in this story, you will have to be able to complete, uh, to build a complete suit of virtual prototype variants. This process needs to be robust and simple to make design changes. The first step to this is having a model that is parameterizable. There are multiple ways to achieve this. One way is using the out of the box CAT tool in STAR, which allows you to import geometry, create new geometry, or even connect to other CAD tools. Let's say, for example, here is a simple bro fan created in NX and imported into STAR CCM. The number of fan blades was parameterized in NX and was dragged directly into STAR with a few clicks. This parameter can also be updated within the STAR CCM user interface. Moreover, there is bidirectional association, that is, any change to the geometry in STAR would also update in NX. Essentially, these parameters can be imported directly from CAD into your simulation tool. This eliminates manual and repetitive workflows. Now, in this example, the blade geometry was designed to be parametric to allow you for many different blade shapes and number of blades. The shape of the volume was held constant, but this could be easily varied as well. Next is you need to quickly and cost effectively test these variants with simulation. That means being able to discretize the or mesh the domain and solve for the solution for all the variants. This can be made possible by the robust measure of Star CCM Plus, such that no human in the loop is required to fix the geometry or meshes for each design iteration. Star CCM's meshing capability is one of its highlights and is flexible in the sense that it can accommodate even the hardest lot of geometry. It's robust in terms of the accuracy of the result it outputs, but also easy to use from a user perspective. You'll notice it uses polyhedral elements, which has proven to give better quality results in much less computational time than the traditional elements such as tetrahedrals. The mesh is finer, close to the impeller to capture the mixing physics. Going closer to the impeller, you will see orthogonal layers of the prism cells used to capture the near wall layer effects. To drop it off, meshing in star is fully parallelizable, and so is the simulation. This greatly reduces preparation time. The key takeaway here is generating this smooth transitioning mesh in star is easy and fully automated. It's noteworthy to mention that star CCM meshing capabilities also include overset mesh, chimera mesh, as well as mesh morphing. It also has the industry's first advanced model-driven adaptive mesh refinement scheme. Next is once you know, you've tested each design, you need to be able to assess the performance. In this case, we're looking at both pressure drop through the compressor and the power required to pump the fluid. As you can see, the solution fits the experiment data well. The post-processing capabilities in Star CCM Plus are very powerful. You can visualize the results quantitatively and qualitatively dynamically while the solution is iterating. Additionally, you can also you know, see the story figures in your simulation through something known as screenplay. Creating these animations add an additional dimension when visualizing results and pre presenting data. And the screenplays are easily created within Star CCM Plus with ease. Another cool feature that I'm quite fascinated by is the integration of Star CCM Plus with a VR headset. You can dive in into your simulation and analyze it. Engineers can now study the data together like never before. Finally, design exploration, the holy grail of simulation, is validating, you know, in terms of validating a design, which is generally the stepping stone of simulation, we are 
essentially looking to get a better design quickly. And that's what you know, people are gunning for when investing in simulation. With STAR, easy design optimization is directly embedded, and it leverages the same pipeline workflow we have seen so far. The design manager is able to handle exploring the design space using the state-of-the-art Sherpa algorithm with the objectives of finding the best trade-off solution. And for every solution found, the geometry, mesh, simulation results can all be saved and post-processed efficiently to look at sensitivities, for example. So that's it. Build, test, assess, and explore. As we've talked about previously, we want to do as many simulations automatically to explore our design space, thereby driving innovation. But this cannot happen without a robust streamlined modeling and meshing, starting with a parameterized geometry tied down with the inbuilt optimizer. And STAR CCM has all these capabilities. As introduced by Hassan earlier, you know, he brought up the concept of Sim Center, which is a simulation hub. The concept of Sim Center is to be able to use tools that cover various simulation do domains, but also maintain connectivity between them. This can be seen by the ease of the uh, use of the portal that enables you to connect to some simulation tools like Amazon to Star CCM Plus to run coupled simulation. Let's look at an example. This is an example of a gear rotor pump. Uh, we would like to assess the stress analysis of the pump. Here, the inlet and outlet pressure of the pump is calculated through system simulation in Amazon, which is then sent to the CEA model of the motor modeled in STAR. Let's look at some of the results here. Here shown are the displacement and pressure forces on the rotor computed by STAR CCM+. Modeling this entire system in 3D would be too computationally expensive. So this is an example how we can verify the performance of a subcomponent in 3D within a full system. All the results presented here today are validated by our industry partners. Now, most of you might wonder, wonder one thing is with regards to the licensing scheme that STAR provides. We have solutions that cover all types of usage and size of models. We have the traditional method where you get limited core usage, but with growing demands of HPCs, one thing that becomes an issue when expanding their HPC or uh, expanding their uh, clusters there are additional costs associated with licenses. However, STAR also has a license that can run on essentially unlimited number of cores. With, however, there are many users that do not run CFD analysis all the time, and many see the value in, in uh, you know, they don't see the value in investing in an HPC. So cloud computing uh, resources are the option to go to. For them, there's the power on demand option, where you can get uh, you know, simulations on unlimited number of cores, what are charged per hour and can be easily hosted on cloud computing resources. Finally, for those looking for automation exploration, we have power tokens which enable you to run multiple sim uh, simulations simultaneously, making exploring the design space feasible. The key takeaway over here is that we have the flexible licensing scheme, giving the best bang to your buck. So. I've shared a vision of where our solution comes from and how that they can be used. Another aspect or an important ingredient that distinguishes us from other solutions is the level of commitment that comes to ensuring your success in using the software. We have what's called the DSE or Designated Support Engineer who will work with you and will be your champion to ensure fast adoption and gets familiar with your workflow and application. So their role is not limited to software support, but instead will go beyond the call and act as advisors throughout the implementation process as well as after. There's also a direct pipeline between you and product management should there be any features you need added today. I'd like to end today's presentation with this slide. Here's the fundamental challenge. If you look at how engineers are spending their time with simulation in your organization, you'll find them something like this. This is a similar concept to that what Dan introduced in the previous uh, slides before. So the idea over here is that we want to spend more time exploring the design space and less time building and assessing. And this is essentially achieved through Star CCM Plus and various solutions within Sim Center by, you know, by, by essentially enabling you to discover better designs faster. But beyond uh, just a given solution, it's also important that we create solutions that, are, that can focus on engineering rather than building computer models. Armed with this knowledge, we are set out to some 12 years ago to build a streamlined virtual prototyping solution to achieve this. And to help our customers discover better designs faster, our solutions 
are completed with three pillars that really define who we are. And essentially, it comes to innovation, creating that flexible licensing scheme that we talked about. And finally, we provide a model of individualized customer support that can ensure organizations can succeed in making the shift in simulation strategy through knowledge transfer and expertise. So this marks the end of my presentation. Stan, pass over the mic to you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Jaffis. Uh, thank you all for, for taking the time to, to, to interact with us. I think considering we're towards the end, any any questions that we have, we'll, we'll address them and respond back by email. Um, at this point, just wanted to quickly note a couple of key things. Firstly, the material that we shared here today will be available uh, and, and sent to you afterwards for you to review and, and, uh, and share internally as, as you'd like to see. Um, in addition, you will be receiving a short survey just in terms of how your experience was in the webinar. Please do take a minute or two to fill it out. We, we strongly value your input and it's going to help us create and, and prepare better content and more valuable content for you. Finally, as, as I mentioned, this is part of an excellent series. The next portion is going to be on, on uh, digital manufacturing. So please be aware of information coming out on that. Um, we do have uh, multiple other webinar streams running right now as, as we're making more virtual content available. Um, for, for, for our customers and, and engineers who are interested in the content that we have prepared. So please go ahead and take a look at that, the, the link you see there below. And finally, if there was something that you felt we didn't cover and you'd like for us to review, don't hesitate to reach out. You can send your questions over to info at myhtt.com. With that, again, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate you staying um, almost the entire hour. Thank you as well to Yafis and Hassan uh, for the excellent presentations. Uh, and we look forward to hearing from you. Have a great day and, uh, and we'll be in touch. Bye now.